number 40. And while you're turning there, one thing I forgot to mention both this morning and tonight is that on next Sunday, Brother Trimble and his wife are starting a single Sunday school class, and I'm excited about that. And so you pray for them this week that the class will get started out good. And we've been needing that one for a while. And um, I'm excited they'll be having activities or whatever for the for the singles. And I'm excited about Brother Trimble um, getting this ministry going. Brother Hall is going to be moving over to become the youth pastor. He'll be running the youth department. So he'll take care of that. And um, so that's kind of we're just kind of moving that around. So he'll go to the junior high um, Sunday school class that Brother Trimble was teaching, and um, and so that just kind of moves some things around. But you say, where are you putting them? Well, we're going to put the singles out somewhere out in the field. You know, they're tough; they can handle that. And um, but I'm excited about that about that class starting next Sunday. Isaiah chapter 40. Once you've found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to start reading in verse 28 this evening, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. If you have it, give me a good, strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not Think. Very familiar passage of scripture tonight. I want to talk to you about this passage of scripture. I want to speak tonight on the subject, renewing your strength, renewing your strength. Father, take the next few minutes and allow me to be a help to thy people. I so badly want to be that help, but I need your guidance. I need your power that only you can give. Would you tonight, Holy Spirit, would you use me? Would you help me, please? To be a challenge and encouragement to your people tonight, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. There is never a power shortage with God. God always has the power to accomplish any work of faith that a believer sets out to achieve. Follow me very carefully. No matter what that work of faith is, if you are doing a work of faith, God has the power to help you to finish that work of faith. Noah started out on a work of faith that was building the ark. Now, it took him 120 years to build that ark, but that was God's timetable. And, and for 120 years, Noah had to work by faith, but he completed the job, and God finished the work of faith through Noah because God, there is no power shortage with God. Um, Nehemiah was set out by faith to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. That was quite the task in the time frame that he had. He didn't have a long time, but he was rebuilding, get this now, a 12-mile wall. He had to remove the rubble and rebuild it in such a very short time. That was a great work of faith. Thank God for people that have the faith to step out and do something that just seems impossible. I think of Ezra in the rebuilding of the temple. That was a work of faith that God helped him to complete. I think of Abraham that, that had a child in his old age. That was a work of faith. I think of Israel being delivered from Egypt, going through the wilderness for 40 years, then going into the promised land and conquering the promised land that was an absolute work of faith that God alone could only accomplish. You see, every power shortage is a human problem, not a God problem. 
When you step out to do something by faith, let me tell you something, that gets God excited. God says, okay, now I can show what I can do because this is a work of faith. If it was a work that Alan Domley can do, God doesn't need to do anything, but get this, but when it's a work of faith that I cannot do, then I need God to do something, then God can step up and show himself strong on, on, on the behalf of God's people. Listen to me. Our problem in this world today, in our independent Baptist churches, we are so faithless. We're backing up instead of going forward. We've let COVID tear us down, and it's time that we say, let's rise up, let's do a work of faith, and let's see what God can do. Man, if I was in a dead church, I'd get out of it. I'd get out of it. Because there's nothing like the work of faith. You see, every problem, every power shortage problem is a human problem. Are you telling me if the problem, if the, if the power shortage problem, are you telling me God's not an omnipotent God anymore? Are you telling me right now that God's not the eternal God anymore? Are you telling me that God, the God who created the world, doesn't have the power to help you with your work of faith? Are you telling me that God can't do that? Are you telling me the God who saved you from hell lost his power to keep your salvation until you get to heaven? Are you telling me that? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that if God is powerful enough to save me, that is the greatest work of faith. That means any faith ever after that, God can still do it because salvation is the greatest work of faith. That means this. That means, get this now, that means if you are saved tonight, any act of faith, it takes less faith than it does to get saved. You know, to get saved, I'm, try, I'm putting my faith in someone I've never seen. Somebody help me out. Put my faith in someone I've never heard them talk. I've only hear them talk through his words. Get this now. But we leave, we leave our sight. We go to trust him by faith, and he saves us. Then we become faithless. We trust God to save us from hell, but we don't trust God to do something mighty through us. Hey, can I, listen, one of the, one of the things, if, if, if God allows us, and I continue to go on for many more years, I want Maranatha work, Baptist Church, I, we talk about it being the miracle of Maranatha. You know why, it's, why I want it to be a miracle of Maranatha? Because it takes faith. I want one day when Alan Domley dies that they can say there was a work of faith that God did through Brother Domley and the people of Maranatha Baptist Church to show a world in 2022 and beyond that God still can build a church in this day. People say, well, preacher, you're always, you're always starting something new. You're always trying to do something. Yeah, works of faith. Works of faith. Listen to me, I'd rather, I'd listen, I'd rather, listen, this thing of just, well, let's just, let's just hold on. No, I'm not holding on. I'm charging forward. Don't need to hold on. God moves forward. I want to move with him. Now, verse 28 says something. God says, hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. God says, listen, I never get weary. Get this, and I love this. He never gets weary of helping us. Trust me, he has to help me out a lot. Hmm, come on. We're not smart. We, we, listen, we trip over our own two feet, and yet God says, I'm willing to help you out. You can't even get your word straight. God says, I can help you out. You can't get your thoughts straight. God says, I'm willing to help you out. You can't see tomorrow. God says, I'm willing to help you out. God says, listen, I never get weary of helping you out. And I like this. God never quits on the believer if the believer won't quit on themselves. And when the believer does quit on themselves, God still doesn't quit on them. Amen. That's good. Now, I want you to notice something. In verse 31, God says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. God says one way, I love this, one way you can be like God is to never get weary or faint. Yeah. Now, follow me carefully. 
in our text verse, in, in Isaiah 40, 31, the scripture says, but they that wait upon the Lord. Now stop right there. I want you to look at that verse. So nowhere does this verse say that the Lord renews the strength. Look at this. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, I'm going somewhere in here in a second, so don't, don't cast me out yet. Just follow me very carefully. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He says, they shall mount. Who's the they? The individual. They shall mount up with wings as evil. They are uh, as eagles. They shall run. Who's the they? The, the Christian. They shall run and not be weary. And they, who's that? The Christian shall walk and not faint. Now, God gives us the strength in the couple of verses earlier, but God says now, when that fainting starts coming, when that weariness starts coming, God says, you have in yourself to renew your own strength. Get this now. God says, I can you can you can you can renew your strength you don't have to become weary you don't have to faint because you already have the power within you to do what God wants you to do Amen. now to renew means this it means to resume to pick up again to carry on to regenerate to revive to refill. So when God says right here, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, get this now, that means somebody dropped the ball. Now let me ask a question. Who dropped the ball, me or God? Me. Come on now. God doesn't, listen, God never fails to give the strength. I'm the one who stopped doing where the strength comes from. I'm the one who stopped, who, who somehow dropped something that I got to pick up again. I'm the one who stopped carrying it that I got to carry on. I'm the one that needs to resume it. God doesn't stop doing what he's going to do. It's myself. And now God says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall, what? Renew their strength. Get this now. God says, okay. He says, when you lose strength, when you get weary, God says the way to do that, he says in verse 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength. Now he goes through three things that are necessary to renew your strength. Let me talk to you about that. First of all, he says it takes faith to renew your strength. Okay, follow me carefully. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall, notice this phrase, mount up with wings as eagles. Circle that phrase and put right next to it, faith. Faith. To mount up, to rise above, takes faith. Get this now. So God's saying you will never get your, okay, you will never find your strength by living a faithless life. You find strength by living a faithful life. Faithless living causes you to become weak in the faith. You know why the Sunday morning Christians don't enjoy Sunday night, Wednesday night? I'll tell you exactly why. They don't enjoy it because they're, they're so busy living the life, of the fleshly life, that their faith life is weak. Yeah. Yeah. The stronger you become in the Lord, the more you realize you need church and your faith is stronger because you're going to church. Now, I'm saying this, and when you live that faithless life, you start living a fearful life. Yeah. So, God says, he says, okay. He says, you want your strength renewed. You want it to be picked up. You need more strength. God says, okay, then step out by faith. Amen. Do something by faith. Don't do less ministry. Do more ministry. Amen. Don't quit. Hey, don't do less bus routes. Do more bus routes. Don't do less Sunday school classes. Do more Sunday school classes. Don't do less teaching. Do more teaching. I, 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 I somehow, I, somehow, I, somehow I, I, I get to see a little bit what goes on in our fundamental circles. And one of the things that bothers me in our fundamental circles is more fundamental Baptist churches. And by the way, they need to take fundamental Baptists off because they're not that. But more fundamental Baptist churches are cutting out the teaching times. We don't need less teaching of the Bible. We need more teaching of the Bible. 
since I've become pastor here, we've added, we've added, uh, let's see, 19, is that right, 19 Sunday school classes, about ready to add our 20th Sunday school class. My desire is that we would have another 70 start. I don't mean to scare you. Just take a breath. You can breathe. It's okay. Say what? More teaching. More teaching. You teach the faith more, there's more strength. You teach, you, teach the, you teach the faith less, there's less strength. Well, but the class isn't big. It's not the size of the class I'm worried about. It's the truths of God's word being taught. That's why we have a, a children's character club on Sunday night. Why? Teach more class. That's why we have a Genesis class. We started the Genesis class. Why? Teach more word of God. That's why we have the TNT Bible class. Why? Teach more of the word of God. My desire is in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna, I want more people to come at the 5 o'clock hour to the TNT Bible hour. We're going to move the choir over to the music room so they can practice in there. I want you to come at 5 o'clock for the TNT Bible hour in here so there's more room. I want to try to get brother the heart so a bigger class for the Genesis class so that way he has more people to teach over there. I want the I want the TNT or the Children's Character Club to grow up there. Why? Because the more that the word of God is taught, the more that our strength is strengthened. That's why on Wednesday nights we have the Foundations class. That's why we have the Teenage Blast. That's why we have the children's choir in here. You say, well, they're just singing. No, we're teaching. Amen. We're teaching. Amen. You see, we, listen, too many churches are closing down their Sunday schools, right. trying to have less services. We don't need less services in this day. We need more. Yeah. All right. Why? Rise up as we get, build your strength and get, rise above where you are. Get a vision for yourself. Well, we've lost some people. Okay, so have we, but we keep on going, keep on pushing. So, how do I, how do I, how do I build my strength? Faith. Why? Because faith always, okay, okay, faith always gives you strength because you're doing something. Faith is an action. Now, follow me very carefully. You get strength by using strength. You lose strength by sitting. When I'm seeing someone who's maybe recovering, I'm excited about Brother Stubblefield being here. If he just laid at the house, he'll lose his strength. He's 83, eight, how old? How old are you? Do you know? 80 what? Yes, Brother, Staff, Brother Stafford. I said stubble. Brother, Brother, 85, I'm sorry. I was talking to you and I'm looking at him. But anyway, and I'm sorry for calling you Brother Stafford. But anyway, <laughs> 85 years of age. Now, 85 years of age, it'd be easy just to lay around and say, well, you know, I don't want the pressure. I just can't take it anymore. I'm just going to lay here. And if he did that, he would shrivel up and die. But at 85 years of age, he realizes the value of I've got to keep on, I've got, to some, I've got to push myself a little bit. I'm not saying put yourself in the grave, but push yourself because you, okay, you know how you gain strength when you're lifting weights? Yeah. You, you what? You add more weight. Now, now, you know what? When you don't feel like lifting weights, you say, ah, oh, if you don't do it, you lose strength. But when you go back to that bench and pick up that barbell when you don't feel like lifting weights, after you're done, you feel like you have more what? Energy and strength. You know why? Because strength is, God, is, is achieved through activity, and God says, okay, he says what well, I want you to do. He says I want you that you want to renew your strength. Then step out by faith. That's your choice. That's it. That's it. That's it. Then he says something else. He says, they shall run and not be weary. Now follow me. What's God saying? God's saying this. When you get busy living by faith and get active running the race that God has for you, you won't become weary with the path that you're running in. I want you to listen very carefully. You know why a bunch of these yahoos out here who are changing the word of God? 
don't like the King James Bible because they're backing up. Those who are busy reaching the lost for Jesus Christ have no problem with the King James Bible. Somebody help me out. Though, listen to me, those who have stopped their bus ministry, they're the critics of the, of the independent Baptists because they stopped their bus route. Amen. You have no problem, listen to me, the only reason, because you're sitting there, you've become weary with the old past. You've become weary with the old time religion. you become weary with the preaching. you become weary with the soul winning. Why? Because you're sitting there, you lost your seat, you got tired. Oh, that preacher, oh, he's trying to get me to do it. He's trying to get me to go soul winning. Oh, he's trying to get me to go soul winning. Absolutely I am. Why? Because I don't want you to become weary with the path that, that will help you to be blessed by God. I'm 53 years young. Amen, Brother Dorian. We're not old like Brother Ahmad. Everybody who listens to the preacher, who says Ahmad? Kai. Now, I'm 53 years of age. I've been an independent fundamental Baptist for 54 years. You can figure that out later on. Now listen to me. I'm not that crowd that wants to sit back and criticize everything about the independent Baptist. Can I tell you tonight, if you got saved in this church or from an independent Baptist, it's because of what we are. Why is it that the liberal churches are trying to steal our converts? If they're so interested in the souls of men, then why aren't they out there? Now, when you stop running is when you get tight. You don't like that path. You know why? Because it convicts you. So I run. God says, you just run. You don't get tired of that path. It's a good path. God even says in Isaiah 6.16, I believe it is. Ask you for the old paths, the good ways. The good ways. But when you sit and you're not running in the race, okay, it's easy to criticize a quarterback when you're sitting in the stands. Everybody's a great quarterback sitting on their couch. Somebody help me out. But you're not the one facing a, a 400 pound guy who can run a 4.440, about ready to break your neck. You're not the one having that pressure coming down your backside. Come on, somebody help me out. And until you're standing there, you'd be wise just to zip it up. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's good. And we've got a bunch of Monday morning quarterbacks on their little YouTube channels that haven't led one person to Christ in two years, and they're sitting there. Well, it's just a bad path. No, it's not. It's a wonderful path. Amen. Come on, sir. Amen. Run yes. and not be weary. Preacher, how do, you, how do you keep doing all the? I run. Yeah. Right. Amen. I don't give myself time to stop to think about, oh, I wonder if there's another path because there's not. Right. Yeah. Right. There is. But that way is the way of death. Every way, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Right. Those who back up from soul winning, their heart backs up from the church. Yeah. Amen. Don't kid yourself, your preacher sees it. There are people in this room right now, I'm praying because I'm very concerned about them. They've backed up. Backed up. You become weary with the race. And the reason why you've become weary is because you stopped. You stopped. Nothing wrong with it 10 years ago. Why do you have a problem with it now? Then he says this. He says, run and not be weary. Walk. He said, they shall walk and not faint. I love this. You can run in serving God, but you will faint if you don't slow down daily to walk with God. 
Never understood why God used the word run, not be worried, walk and not faint. And all of a sudden, it, it hit me. God says, okay, run. But he says, every day, you need, to st- you need to slow down. You need to walk with God. Because if you don't walk with God in his word and in prayer, you'll, be, you'll faint. And when you faint, you become weary and you'll stop running. Come on. Now, I can't get so busy in the ministry that I never spend time in God's word. I can't get so busy in the ministry that I don't spend time praying. Listen to me. I'm talking to some of you. You're good people. You're busy. But when's the last time? Okay, some of you haven't even spent this many minutes alone with God in prayer. You're running. You're running. But I'm telling you, you're going to faint. You're going to become weary. Why? You're not walking every day with God. I've got to run. Why? So I don't become weary with the race. But I've got to slow down every day and walk with God so I don't faint. Dry up. Become nothing. One without, listen to me, walking without running makes walking needless. Running without walking leaves you empty of strength. You need both. Follow me very carefully. The more you run, the more you need to walk. The more you walk, the more you will run. Did you get that? So the more people say, I, I, I walk with God, then how come he doesn't show? Well, God just didn't give me the gift. God didn't give any of us the gift to serve. That's a command, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody help me out. So, so the more I run, the more I need to walk. But the more I walk, the more I will run. Get this now. The less I walk, the less I run. The less I run, the less strength I have. The less strength I have, the more open I become to sin and Satan's darts for him to destroy my life. Amen. All right. All right. Let's do it. Amen. It all comes back to one word. They that wait. Upon the Lord. That word wait, circle the word wait, put this right next to it, serve. When you go to a restaurant, there is a what? Waiter or waitress. What do they do? They, they wait on you. They serve you. They that wait upon Alan Domley? No. Upon who? The Lord. You know what a waiter does? Come here. Up here. Brother Harjo, come on up here. Don't sit in Brother Harjo's chair. Yeah, you can sit in mine. You're fine. Get out of my chair. No, just kidding. <laughs> Good, sit down. You know what a waiter does? May I help you? Yes. What do you need? What do you want? Some water. Some water. Okay, let me get you some water. It's Brother Harjo, so you can drink it. Need something? Can I help you out? What, what do you want? Some, some tea. Go get him some tea after church. Would you do that? <laughs> what do you need? Some coffee. some coffee. Oh, now this is my guy right here. <laughs> we'll go have a cup of coffee afterwards. But anyway, then what I'm gonna do? I'm serving them. Yeah. I'm waiting upon them. Yeah. Right. They say someone, someone was wicked before church, and and um, they gave me a snake. Mrs. Underwood's going to be under the ground. <laughs> so when I serve you, I'm waiting, up, I'm, I'm waiting upon him. Waiting upon him. Now, follow me. I mean, you can keep it. I want you to listen to me very carefully. 
When's the last time you went to God and said, I want to serve God? God, what is it you need? They that wait upon the Lord. May I help you, God? God, what, what can I do to help you today? God, what is it that I can do for you today? How can I serve you today? How can I run in the race? That's why you've got to walk. That's why you have to walk. You walk with God to find out how you can wait upon him. Then he gives you what you can do, and then you run with it. Thank you, man. Just put it in there. I don't, I don't like snakes. Well, you know, at church, you stopped walking with God, didn't you? You started walking with somebody else. God says, who hath hindered you? So you stopped walking with, you're always walking with somebody. So you stopped walking with God and you started walking with somebody else. That's why now, what you used to like, you don't like. So every day, I want my strength, I need my strength renewed. Okay, you heard me say, I wake up every morning at 4.30 every morning. I need strength at 4.30 in the morning. I get up, my dogs go out, they come back inside, and they go sound asleep, and I want to cuddle up right next to them and go to sleep myself. You say, what do you do? I walk with him. How? Pull out my Bible. And I open that book, and I say, now, God, I don't know what it is that you have for me to do today, but, God, whatever it is, can you show me in your word what I need today to serve you today? I'm walking. When he gives me my orders, when it starts burning in my heart, then I go and run. And as I run, I have that strength. I don't get weary. I don't become faint. Why? Because I've slowed down to walk with him. And because I walk with him, I can run for him. But if I stop if I stop walking, I will stop running. If I stop running, I'll start sinning. If I start sinning, I'll destroy myself. Very simple verse. Every time you step up your run, you better step up your walk. And every time you step up your walk, you will, you need to step up your run. I'm going to tell you why. You can, you can give several hours and not run, but you become sour because you have too much that you're not giving out. God gives us to soak in that we may give out. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, I walk with God. Well, I wish you'd start running too. So as I pick up that walk, I pick up my run. And as I pick up that run, it makes me to have faith. Reading God's word gives me faith. And, 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 and I, as I read the word of God, my faith grows. And I said, boy, I can do this. I, I, this, this morning I was out walking and I made a statement. I'm not going to tell you what I said, but, but I, I was praying and I said, God, in my ministry, I'd like to have, and I told God what? And after I said that, I said, who said that? Because it is a total act of faith if God makes it happen. Where did it come from? Walking, running, what's your pleasure? How can I help you today? Not what is your pleasure? How may I help you? What is your pleasure? If I'm doing his pleasure, I help him. Oh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. God's going to renew your strength. God's already given you the strength. He's given you the strength in this book. He's given you the strength to serve him. 
He's already given you the faith. Now you take what God's already given you and use it. Brother Heidenreich is 72, right? Been saved for how long? 52 years? I've never one time heard him question the old time religion. Not one time. You know why? He's been busy running and walking. And his faith is unreal. <laughs> Come on. That's why these churches that are backing up, just if you're going to back up, close down. I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to be mean. But when you cut back on soul winning. Really? We don't need less souls saved. We need more souls saved. Somewhere as God's people, we need to figure it out. More. If I need faith, I run. But when I run, I must walk. Yeah. But my walk requires me to run, and my run requires me to walk. Amen. Yeah. So I don't become weary and faint along the way. Every time someone quits or falls, it's because one of those three things stopped. There are preachers that preach behind a pulpit that the only time they open God's word, and I mean this, is to get a sermon. And they're not really getting a sermon. They're getting an outline. Had someone ask me this week, how do you get your sermons? I said, I walk with God. I said, and when it burns in my heart, I said, I give it to my people because apparently if, if, if I needed it, they need it. That's why when I say, I want to be calm tonight. <laughs> and you all say, uh-huh, sure. I was going to say it tonight. I was going to be, try to be calm tonight. Didn't succeed. That's why when I say, well, I want this to be short tonight. That's why you ladies take your shoes off. Because <laughs> you know, well, here we go. You know why? Because I get lost in what God's given me. And I get so excited about what God's given me that helped me. I want you to get what I got. I told my father-in-law, I said, I've changed my sermon for Sunday night because what God gave me this week. And this was it right here. I said, I, I think our church needs this. Run! But you better slow down and walk. If not, you're going to faint, and you're going to become weary with the old paths. Father, tonight, I thank you for your word that is so rich. God, I don't ever want to become weary with the old paths. Those who have become weary with it have simply revealed that they've stopped running. Some are running, but they're, be, they're being faint. It's because they're not, they've not slowed down to walk with you. We all need to have that faith. God, I pray you'd help us tonight. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.